Hey everybody, thanks for uh, stopping by the shop for a visit. It's uh, Chuck, as you know the channel's Outside Screwball, and uh, don't have any machining for you this week. Um, not much of anything. Uh, I do have an excuse, so uh, let's click to a little, uh, little clip. Okay. This is why I'm not filming. <laughs> back from that clip as you can see uh, there was uh, Tom Lipton and uh, Stan Zinkowski and we were up at uh, Tom's shop on Sunday they're working on grinding the uh, vise for the Keith Fenner toolbox giveaway uh, I was just there to uh, observe um, had a great time uh, here's another little clip of uh, Tom grinding back from that clip and uh, like I said uh, I uh, spent uh, Sunday up there and uh, really uh, limited on time I did get to visit Stan on Thursday I went over to his job site and uh, saw his install that was going on and that was uh, really enjoyable also so with that said uh, someone's calling me let me look uh, it's Stan Zinkowski hang on Alright, back from that, kind of lost where I was at. I just wanted to uh, mention uh, my buddy Paul Boulay. Uh, he did the uh, screwy cap. We talked about that, I think, last Tuesday. Uh, it was really nice. I came home the other day. And uh, this is the standard part uh, tool bit holder for the hold ridge. And uh, Paul had made a new one out of steel. This, this guy's out of aluminum and you can see the height difference also. Um, he was doing some work and he wanted to make himself one so he blew out two. Did a, just a super job on it and a nice addition to my tool. So Paul, thank you very much. So to finish up, um, guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. Uh, I'm going to uh, have a rerun going tonight for you. Uh, a lot of new subscribers. We did hit the 6,000 mark. I appreciate that. And the rerun is the uh, Lanehart Rose engine lathe. And uh, like any great rerun of a movie, uh, it, I started watching it, deciding on what to put up. And if you guys haven't seen this, it's worth the time. And if you've seen it before, it's worth the, uh, it's worth the time to watch it again. Just some great, great footage of the machine and uh, the work that my buddy Dale does uh, building parts with it. Okay? Hope uh, you guys enjoy, and uh, we'll see you next uh, Tuesday. Hey Thanks guys, a lot. Uh, we're back with my friend Dale, and uh, today he's uh, installed the geometric chuck on the uh, front of the lathe, um, and he's going to uh, show us how it's used. But before we get into that, I'm going to have Dale kind of just give us a brief explanation of the machine again for anybody that didn't see the first video on it. Uh, I'll post the link right now on the uh, first video. You can always go see that, um, but uh, I'll turn it over to Dale here. All right, this is a, a, a Leanheart rose engine, and what that means is it's got rosettes here. These are called rosettes. They're like cams, and uh, the head of the lathe here is, is, is on a pivot, so it can move back and forth. The shaft is also uh, is able to slide back and forth in this direction so it, it, it can rock and pump uh, and that's done by springs there's a large spring over here that uh, for the rocking motion and there's another spring in the back for the pumping motion Okay. And then the, the, the rosettes uh, move the head and the spring moves it back. This is, is kind of the way it works. Uh, this machine is cr hand cranked. Crank it, crank it by hand. Or I have a motor down there that I can uh, attach the motor to and, and turn the speed down to a couple RPMs per minute. Um, 
This machine was made in 1919 by the Leanheart uh, company. Uh, it's a Swiss company. Um, they were used in the uh, jewelry industry in the in the 20s and 30s mostly. Uh, actually, they, they date back to the 1600s. Hmm. But they were mostly used in the jewelry industry. This one was back east somewhere. It was stored in a barn for like 30 years uh, before I found it. And I had it shipped out here from uh, actually Tennessee. Hmm. What wood are we turning there? Huh? What wood is that? It's, it's yeah. African blackwood. African blackwood. Um. What I got on here now is a is a plant two stage geometric chuck, and it's got two stages in that it has two cross slides on it. It's one here and one here, and you can offset offset them to whatever you want, depending on the diameter that you want to turn and uh, the pattern that you want to make. Uh, it's a very complicated thing, actually. Um, it has a gear forward and reverse and what this thing does is it makes loops um, and the forward and reverse uh, if it's forward it makes an outside loop if it's in reverse it makes an inside loop hmm. and that's uh, that's what that does so that's what this gear train back here for here we have a pinion gear that's a drive gear and uh, this is where I met Chuck actually he was uh, kind enough to uh, let me use his mill, and together we made uh, 14 gears. Um, we made some pinion gears, and we made some, uh, I guess these are called idler gears or uh, whatever. It's part of the gear train. These are the gears that we made. I'll show you those here. Uh, there's, these are uh, the idler gears. And... This bunch here is the pinion gears. The pinion gears have a hex head because they're drive gears. Hmm. That was a lot of fun that day. So we got to make some gears, which was uh, very cool. And I didn't film it that day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of those gears that we made is right here. And I believe this is uh, a 36 tooth gear. Okay. And uh, I believe this is a 60 tooth. And anyway, the, the combination of gears... That you, uh, these are change gears. Uh, I also made some other stuff. There's a, there's a link here. This link is so you can add another gear out here. Actually, here's the stuff that goes with the link. And these I made. These are uh, specialized screws. This is the other half of that link. And uh, you can also stick a gear out here. And this, this link goes back over and connects, connects to this... Uh, this plate right here and that allows you to add another gear out here so I can actually put a, a bunch of a bunch of different gears which changes uh, the which spiral cha yes which changes the uh, it, it, it changes the number of loops okay and the two stage there's another set of gears out here and they are change gears also and when you engage the, the second stage It'll make loops in loops, hmm. double set of loops. And you taught, and it, you it, taught all this stuff to yourself. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this, this chuck was probably made uh, somewhere in the late 1800s, 1880 to 1900. And uh, it was made by Plant, and he's an uh, English uh, maker. And there's a number of different uh, styles of these. Holtzapfel made one. Uh, there's a number of different people that made them, but uh, when I got this, uh, it was uh, frozen up, but it was just frozen from uh, sticky grease, hmm. so I, I couldn't move it at all, so I, I had to take it all apart and figure it out and put it all back together. And so what we're going to do now, I also had to make something else in the back here. I had to make this plate to attach to uh, the lean heart to engage the geometric chuck. Okay. We also had to make uh, uh, threaded adapters 
because the threads on the on the plant uh, geometric chuck are 9.45 threads per inch, which is uh, nobody uses anymore. And uh, the threads on my on this are 11 threads per inch. So kind of odd threads. So I had to make adapters to adapt the chuck to the lathe. And then also I had to make another adapter out here to uh, attach uh, one by eight threads to uh, 9.45 threads here. So uh, it was a lot of fun <laughs> making, making all these things that are, are, are weird. So this is what we got now. We, uh, when I crank this around, I, there's a cutter out here on the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a design in the top, similar to the one that we did last time. Right. Um, yeah, I've got the top the tops all finished. The whole body of the of the, of the box is, is actually done right now, and I'm just turning the last thing on the top. Top. And that that cutter you said is a carbide. Yeah, the carbide is a a sixteenth inch uh, carbide cutter. In the in the drive mechanism, that's you you built all that. Yes, yes. This is all I, I built all this stuff. Um, there's a, a motor over here that turns it. Uh, I think. Uh, 2,500 RPMs, and then I've uh, put a, a, a wheel on top, so it's actually going faster than that. Okay. You know, I, I put a different size pulley on top, and it's probably, it'll go up to like 10,000 RPMs, maybe, I mean, 20,000 RPMs. Oh. So it, it flies like a router. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, it, it's connected to a controller, and I can control the speed of the cutter. Oh, sweet. So, um, oops, these little bearings uh, will not take uh, the, the 20,000 RPM, so then, you can't use it at full speed. And then moving the camera here, the... the uh, yeah, I have a, a Hardage cross slide. Let me hold it up here. Yeah, you can do that. I have a Hardage cross slide here that's, uh, that I've adapted to the original uh, uh, cross slide stand for the, for the lathe. So it, it uh, just slides on top. It's it, hard, these hardage car slides are extremely accurate. You can turn them at angles. Um, they they already uh, uh, have a, a a measurement for the uh, that doubles the uh, when, when you're cutting the diameter. It, it, it automatically figures Tells, it out yeah, for okay. you. Yes. Yeah. So, so this is in 200 increments. Right. Where this is. The in and out is in a hundred. Hundred, okay. So it, it already tells you, you know, how much you're actually taking off. Okay. Yeah, that one's there. That works. Um, so I'll try to get in close here so you guys can see the cutter. It's very small. Yeah, there you can see it. Hopefully the camera's focusing enough there. Cool. Okay. All right, so this should not take too long. Uh, let me, uh, we'll, we're going to stop and we'll get set up and then we'll come right back and watch it uh, make some uh, sawdust. Okay, we're back and I've tried to position the camera so we can get a good view. And uh, Dale's going to go for it here. Okay. So five times you can see uh, how that goes. Okay. Now I've got it set up for a 20 loop circle. I'm going to call it a circle. 20 loops in this pattern. There it comes. And I preset up the machine. It takes a while to get everything centered on here. Everything has to be level, centered, uh, or it doesn't come out right. Uh, quantify what's a what's a while? <laughs> uh, it probably took me an hour to say that. Hour? Oh, yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. Let's see if I can zoom in a little closer to you guys. To make the pattern, it, uh, it has to go around 20 times. Ah. 
and then I have to adjust the depth and go more and keep going until I get to the depth that I uh, want it to be. Try to move you guys so you can get a picture of the geometric chuck. So par pardon the wiggling. Five more thousands to the depth. Now, are the roses working right now, too? No, here? they're not. They're not engaged. No, they're not engaged at all. So it's all the geometric stuff. To make the, uh, the rosettes work, you have to uh, you have to put uh, the, a, a rubber or a cam follower against right. them. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's hard to see right now, but is that cross slide moving back and forth on the chuck? No, it's not. It's not. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's fixed, fixed. At, at the diameter that I want. I've got it out over here. Can you see the first yeah. stage? Right. I have it out uh, 11 turns, I believe. Okay. It's 11 turns out. And that's to get the diameter I want uh -huh. on the pattern. White pipe you see there in the in the screen is uh, a vacuum setup he has. Get the vacuum off to just so we can hear. Otherwise, he really wouldn't have as much uh, sawdust here. And what's the wood you're turning there? It's African blackwood. African blackwood. This is about the next thing to cut and steal. Yeah. <laughs> If I put a different cutter on here, uh -huh. it would uh, change the pattern uh, a whole lot. Just the cutter alone. Just the cutter alone. Yeah. Uh, and that goes for diameter of cutter and the width of the cutter. So this is making a very fine line.
when you control in depth the cut back here on this yeah. cut. I'm going to try and get in another 5,000, so I'm at 20,000 now. And what would you typically, how deep started. would you go? You know, on these, uh, I would like to go till it, it makes a point. In the center? Uh, no, oh, not in yeah. the center. Oh. A point on the on the facets. Okay. Now this one is not going to make a point on all the facets, but the center the center part I should be able to get to a, a, a V point. I'm very excited and just sitting here cranking away. Cranking away. Actually, for this, I should have probably hooked up the motor. So, we stopped the camera there for a few, and uh, Dale went ahead and hooked up his uh, electric motor so that he doesn't actually have to do the hand cranking. And you can see that the uh, lathe is turning, and uh, you can sit back and just crank in the uh, the feed as it's necessary. And it's on a rheostat, so the yeah. the speed is adjustable. So. We were talking about, as we stopped the camera too, uh, go ahead and explain what you were shooting for Dale on the... Well, let me shut it off. Yeah. Right in the center here, I would like this little flower pattern to come to a sharp V point. Okay. And uh, hopefully I can do it with that 16th inch cutter. Now here's another one that I've, I've done that was done with a little larger cutter. And you can see it makes a wider groove, and it's easier to make. Uh, what you shoot for in this case is probably V's everywhere. It comes up to a point. These have some flat spots on top. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you like that because it reflects the light. Uh, nice. Uh, sometimes you want it to come to a, uh, go deep enough to to make a V there. Uh huh. So everything comes to a point. Uh huh. And that that requires going fairly deep. Okay. So um, yeah. all these patterns uh, look good. You yeah. know, it just depends on, on, on what you uh, what you're looking for. What appeals to the eye, right. yeah. Yeah. And, and is I, that what what is that? Is that this is again African, African blackwood. blackwood. Yeah. Okay. Now here's another pattern on the back. 
This was made with the same thing, and this is three loops. Okay. The one we're doing now is 20 loops. Okay. This side is 20 loops. Hmm. So you can see uh, what this thing can do. And, the three and this, is, this is forward, this is reverse. Wow. And the three loops just is a change in your gearing. Right. In the, in the gears. And, and you can, with this, with this chuck, you can also index this. If I wanted to go a, co a couple of degrees, I think there's 96, uh, 96 divisions on this wheel. And if I wanted to go uh, one click, that would be uh, divide 360 by 96, I guess. And that would be what how many degrees one click is, which is probably 3.75, somewhere thereabouts. Uh -huh. So every every uh, tooth on here is like like three degrees. In the bot, there's there's two catches. Oh, it's the same catch. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And you have something similar back here. Uh, yeah. This this back here again is an index. Uh, and and you can offset it back here too. Uh -huh. So if I move this over a tooth, and then again, this is I believe is a different index than what's on front. front yeah. Yeah. So you can probably get just about a, a degree if you wanted uh, offset on uh -huh. each one, and that, that's what uh, we've done on this one. Is I've just moved it over um, like like a, a degree, uh -huh. and cut the same pattern, and you can see. Uh, those are actually just three loops. I moved it over to Greek, cut, cut it again, moved it over again, cut it again. Oh, I get it. I get skipped it. Skipped one. Yeah. And then cut two more. Uh huh. So uh, you can do unlimited. Uh, yeah. Un unlimited. Patterns. Whatever your imagination yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, this one on the outside, this is where the cutter turned right here. There's an inward loop, mm -hmm. and it happened to be right on top of itself, hmm. and that's why it gave you that pattern. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, there's unlimited things you can do this with the gears that me and Chuck made uh, I can do one loop two loops three loops four loops five loops six loops not seven uh, eight um, not nine ten eleven or not eleven either they are uh, the, the the prime numbers are uh, kind of out for most things okay um, but uh, the rest of them, you know, up to, you know, this one makes 20 loops. I'm sure uh, uh, after it gets 20, it gets pretty busy. Yeah, I bet, yeah. So, uh, so I, I kind of stopped uh, there because I didn't think I would need, uh, yeah. you know, anything above that because it gets just too messy. What's the biggest diameter piece you've turned like this? Is it this is about it, about you know. It, huh? this, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you'd ever turn the, the, much. the larger you, it just, the pattern just expands. Right, right. You know, so uh, yeah, and blackwood is uh, doesn't come very big. Right, that's you yeah. Know? <laughs> uh, three inch square is about the about best it, you're huh? gonna do on the, on the blackwood. I mean, there are logs, but still, it's uh, there are a lot of voids, a lot of. You know, a, a bug holes in it sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, so it's it it uh, it's hard to get a large piece. Let's just get another shot of it down here. Mine's static. And these, this is where the rubbers, the bumpers yeah, yeah, go that, this, that I ride. Can, I can move these in and, and right. to touch the. Uh, uh, the rosettes. And, and, and the I have another one on this is, side. Right. Also. Yeah. So. Depending on which side you want to use, it makes a completely different pattern. Right. Yeah, because you know okay. it makes the opposite over here. If you want to rub on that side. I was just clarifying mm. with Dale because um, you guys may have the same questions I have, uh, but you're not here. So this outside perimeter of this top. Uh, these these cuts were done using the rosette uh, mechanism, and the top was in the uh, horizontal position. Uh, so this indexing is only done on on this direction. So uh, and you actually see that in the uh, previous video that we did uh, using the rosettes. This is the final close out here. You can see the machine's running on its own and. Dale's got the vacuum going, uh, picking up the uh, dust, and uh, quite the marvel to watch. Well, thank you, Dale, very much. 
So this is the actual cup that the uh, top is being made for. Go ahead, Dale, explain what we have there. Uh, this is a 12-sided, uh, uh, yeah, 12-sided figure. Uh, the same, I used the same uh, uh, rosette that I used on the last one on the straight line chuck. That we filled, right. Right. And I, uh, but I used a different rosette to make the uh, decorations. I don't know if that shows up. Yeah, really I think it's showing up pretty good. Yeah. Nice. And uh, anyway, that's the top that's, that's going to fit on this thing. Cool. Looking through a magnifying glass here, so I don't know how this will show on the film, but we're trying it. Just doing his last final hand cranks to uh, complete the cuts here. So Dale's uh, taking the uh, part out of the lathe, and uh, you can see it. Go ahead and turn it a little bit, Dale, so you can see or spin it, uh, oh. rotate it, and you can kind of see how it picks up the light different and how it shows. Now this uh, Dale would end up with this uh, putting a coat of lacquer, and then buffing the lacquer off, and then finishing with some wax. Uh, too cool. Great, thanks Dale.